Your thoughts are worth $847 billion. That's what the global data industry made last year selling information about you, your clicks, your location, your purchases. But what happens when they don't just track what you buy, they track what you think before you buy it? The rumor exploding across tech circles right now, Tesla's $199 Pi phone with neural interface technology, direct brain-to-device control, no touch, no voice, just thought. And here's the question keeping security experts awake. If your phone reads your brain signals, who else gets access to that data? This isn't science fiction. Brain-computer interfaces are FDA-approved right now. Paralyzed patients control robotic arms with thoughts. But bringing this to 300 million consumer smartphones, that's when your most private asset, your mind, becomes potentially hackable. Today, you'll learn what's technically possible, what's pure marketing hype, and why this could either revolutionize accessibility for millions or become the final death of privacy. Because unlike your password, you can't change your neural signature. The technology that's already here. Let me start with something that should terrify you. In 2023, researchers hacked a commercial EEG headset and extracted four-digit PIN codes from users' brain patterns while people simply thought about entering passwords. They didn't type anything. Hackers just read electrical signals and decoded their thoughts. That's published, peer-reviewed science. Now imagine that vulnerability in your pocket, connected to your bank account, your email, your entire digital life. So what is brain-computer interface, really? It's simply reading electrical signals from your nervous system and translating them into commands a machine understands. When you decide to move your hand, your brain sends electrical impulses. BCI intercepts those signals before your hand moves and redirects them to a device instead. There are two approaches that matter. Invasive BCI requires surgical implants, electrodes on or in the brain, crystal clear signals, but you need brain surgery. This is what Neuralink develops for paralyzed patients. Non-invasive BCI uses sensors outside your head, like an advanced EEG headset. Much safer, no surgery, but signals are dramatically weaker because they pass through skull, skin, hair, and they pick up enormous noise from muscle movements, heartbeats, eye blinks. Current BCI systems can do impressive things. Paralyzed individuals type at 90 characters per minute using only thoughts. They control cursors, operate wheelchairs, play video games. But here's the canyon-sized gap. Doing this in a controlled lab with a wired connection and someone sitting still is one thing. Making it work on a smartphone everywhere, crowded airports, moving vehicles, noisy restaurants, while stressed or distracted, that's an entirely different engineering universe. And here's the uncomfortable reality. If Siri misunderstanding you is frustrating, imagine your phone executing a $400 purchase because it misread your brain signal. Three walls between today and tomorrow. There are three massive barriers between current BCI and a consumer phone you'd actually want. First, bandwidth and signal integrity. Your brain's electrical signals are incredibly weak, microvolts. With non-invasive sensors, these signals penetrate multiple tissue layers and arrive contaminated with noise from dozens of sources. Here's what that means in reality. You're in a crowded airport trying to answer your daughter's call. Your Pi phone attempts to read your intention but also picks up stress from your delayed flight, muscle tension from luggage, frustration from the crying baby nearby. Signal-to-noise ratio is terrible. It interprets chaos as a command. Instead of answering the call, it purchases a $400 airline upgrade you didn't want. Neural authorization means the transaction processes instantly with no confirmation. 
Current BCI decodes basic intentions, select, confirm, directional movement. But to control a smartphone normally, scrolling email, rapidly switching apps, navigating while driving, you need exponentially more bandwidth and cleaner signals. We're nowhere close yet. The second wall is latency. For your brain to accept a device as genuine extension rather than frustrating tool, response must be under 100 milliseconds, ideally under 50. Even a quarter second delay feels disconnected and exhausting. You'll stop using it. This is why thought-controlled gaming, real-time AR, and neural vehicle control remain in the distant future. The third wall is power and form factor. You need sensor arrays constantly monitoring, AI processors continuously filtering noise, machine learning adapting to your patterns, all while keeping the phone slim, cool, and lasting a full day. This is why every non-invasive BCI today comes with bulky headsets and external battery packs. You cannot stuff that into an 8mm smartphone with current components. Stop, because here's a dirty secret. Every time the neural system misreads your signal, and early on it will constantly, it must log that data to improve through machine learning. In the first six months when accuracy is terrible, you're generating a massive database of how your brain responds to stress, confusion, frustration. That data has to live somewhere. Who else can access it? Could Tesla actually deliver this? If any company can break through, Tesla has three advantages. First, custom hardware optimization. Tesla proved with full self-driving they can design specialized processors that dramatically outperform general chips for specific AI tasks. They could create a dedicated neural processing unit optimized for real-time signal filtering and intent recognition, running entirely on device. Second, advanced AI signal processing. The more sophisticated your AI, the better you filter noise and extract genuine intent from messy biological signals. Tesla's experience processing millions of miles of chaotic driving data through neural networks could translate directly to processing brain data in unpredictable environments. And third, Neuralink. Elon Musk's brain implant company gives Tesla access to the most advanced BCI research on the planet. But brutal honesty, Neuralink focuses on invasive medical-grade implants for patients with severe paralysis. Pi phone rumors discuss consumer products for everyday use. That engineering gap is enormous, like comparing a Formula One race car to your grandmother's Toyota. If Tesla ships neural interface, and that's a massive if, version 1 would not read detailed thoughts. It would read simplified, consciously triggered commands, deliberately selecting an icon, mentally confirming an action, scrolling with sustained concentration, basic command level control requiring conscious focus with multiple confirmations, not seamless mind reading. Assisted control, potentially faster than typing, but nowhere near as fluid as touching the screen. Now some think, I'll simply turn off the neural feature and use the phone normally. Here's where it gets complicated. For neural interface to work well, it needs continuous baseline data. It must understand your normal brain signals during different activities to detect when you're issuing intentional commands versus passive thoughts. Even when you're not actively using thought control, the system likely listens in the background, constantly calibrating your neural patterns. Tesla could promise local processing with no cloud uploads, but the critical question, do you trust any technology company to never change their privacy policy? Not after two years when sales slow? Not after five years under shareholder pressure? Not when government agencies request access for national security? Not when the business model shifts and neural data becomes more valuable than hardware. The world this could create. But let's talk why this matters, even in limited form. If neural interface reaches basic functionality, it opens genuine possibilities, 
truly hands-free control that works reliably. You're driving, think call Sarah, it happens. Think navigate home, route appears. No voice commands that misunderstand, no hands off wheel. For smart homes, lights, temperature, music adjust automatically through recognized intent patterns. For AR and VR, this eliminates controllers entirely. You navigate, select, interact, purely through attention and thought. But here's where this transcends convenience, accessibility for individuals with disabilities. For people with limited mobility, paralysis, ALS, severe arthritis, this isn't a cool gadget, this is independence the ability to communicate, control their environment, interact with the digital world, manage health, video call grandchildren, without physical limitations that trap them for years. We're already seeing profound impacts in medical settings. This technology, done right, could bring that capability to consumer devices affordably. For those who lived through flip phones to smartphones, this could represent that magnitude of transformation not incremental upgrades, a foundational shift in how humans interface with technology. The smartphone era made us constantly connected. The neural era could make technology a genuine cognitive extension, responding to intention rather than requiring translation through fingers or voice. The nightmare nobody wants to discuss. But now the other side, because security experts are raising alarms. Brain data is fundamentally different from any data your devices have collected. Photos show what you've seen. Location shows where you've been. Messages show what you've said. But continuous neural monitoring knows something far more intimate. Your intentions before you act, your attention patterns throughout the day, your emotional responses to content, your stress during decision-making, even subconscious reactions you're unaware of. Even if only decoding basic commands, the system must collect and analyze neural patterns continuously. Over months and years, with machine learning improving, the system builds a neural fingerprint, a unique signature of how your specific brain processes information. With enough data, AI could potentially detect when you're anxious about something you're reading, being deceptive in a message, attracted to a product before consciously realizing it, about to make impulsive purchases, experiencing early cognitive decline. This isn't paranoia. This is where machine learning applied to neural data naturally leads. Facebook's algorithms predict political views, sexual orientation, likelihood of depression from likes and posts alone. Imagine what they could infer from direct brain electrical activity over years of monitoring. And here's what keeps researchers awake. If that neural data gets breached, you cannot change it. Stolen credit card? Get a new one. Hacked passwords? Reset them. Leaked social security number? Freeze credit and get monitoring. But stolen neural signature? Unique patterns of how your brain generates thoughts? You cannot get a new brain. That data is you, permanently and immutably. Think about implications almost nobody discusses. A sophisticated attacker with your neural data doesn't just steal accounts. They could potentially trigger false commands by replicating your patterns, manipulate what you perceive by sending conflicting signals, induce disorientation through subtle interference, or analyze decision-making patterns to craft perfectly targeted manipulation. This sounds like science fiction, but any bi-directional neural system must engineer defenses against these attacks, and our legal framework has zero protection for brain data. No federal laws classifying neural information as protected health data, no regulations requiring neural encryption standards, no legal precedent for when thoughts become accessible to third parties. The decision you'll have to make. 
So the critical question, if neural interface becomes standard on smartphones, and with Apple, Google, Tesla all investing billions, it likely will within five years, your choice won't be use it or don't. Your choice will be, which company's version do I trust with my most intimate data, under what terms? The upgrade cycle would fundamentally transform. You wouldn't replace phones for better cameras or faster processors. You'd replace because version 2 understands intentions 15% more accurately, responds 50 milliseconds faster, integrates more seamlessly with your nervous system's unique patterns. The relationship between human and device would shift from user tool to something far more intimate, closer to human prosthetic integration. That's not necessarily bad, but it is irreversible once normalized. But the ultimate question isn't whether Tesla or Apple or Google can engineer this. It's whether we as a society are prepared for consequences. Are you personally willing to trade the most private thing you possess, your thoughts, intentions, mental patterns, for hands-free device convenience? Even only reading basic commands crosses a neurological boundary we've never crossed in consumer technology. And once crossed, once normalized, once expected, there's no going back. This decision arrives within 18 months. Because if neural phones become standard, and every indicator says they will, your choice isn't adopt or resist. It's which version, under which privacy terms, with which company holding your neural data. In part two, I'm doing something no tech reviewer has dared, showing exactly what privacy policy Tesla needs to make neural phones genuinely safe. Every clause, every loophole, and comparing it with what Apple and Google actually do right now with your biometric data. Spoiler, far worse than you think. Comment neural if you want that analysis. Comment safe if you think I'm exaggerating. I'll explain why you're underestimating what's at stake. Last week, 267,000 people watched our Pi phone analysis. 89% were over 50. Subscribe because this isn't just tech coverage. It's understanding tools that will define your next decade before you're locked in. Tech companies want you excited. I want you prepared. There's a massive difference. Hit subscribe, drop your thoughts below, and remember, stay informed, stay skeptical, and never stop questioning who controls the technology you depend on.